Hey, welcome back, I'm Lei. NASA plans to build a base on the moon in the year 2022. But there are still many interesting yet pragmatic questions we need to solve before we can do so. Will there be internet on the moon? How about water, electricity, energy, food? How do we solve the problem of radiation? If we're really going to build a base on the moon, these are the questions we can't avoid. So let's talk about them one by one. Internet on the moon is an interesting matter and lucky for us, we already have multiple solutions for it. Really good solutions, I would say. First one that comes to my mind is satellite internet, sending information through radio waves from a satellite, or rather a group of satellites that orbit the moon. This is the technology we already have and is already in use on Earth. For example, scientists on Antarctica get their internet from a satellite that hovers above the sky and hence, it shouldn't be a problem building a similar system for our astronauts on the moon. Another even better solution on the moon is a new communication technology that NASA has tested, laser communication. It's called Lunar Laser Communication Demonstration. Information can either be sent by satellite or directly from Earth. Using laser communication has many advantages, one of which is the concentration of information. As we know, lasers stand for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Hence, by definition, laser beams contain higher concentration of information than its traditional radio frequency counterparts. Another super important advantage of laser communication is that laser uses near infrared for transmission, which has higher frequency and lower wavelength. I don't want to get overly scientific in my explanation. All you need to know is that as a result, the ground terminal that receives internet data can be built much smaller for laser communications than the one built for radio frequency communications. Therefore, it's much easier for us to send those ground terminals to the moon. For those of you guys who want to know more about this topic, I'll link a relevant NASA paper down below. Next, let's talk about energy on the moon. On Earth, we have several types of energy sources, fossil fuels, wind energy, solar energy, geothermal energy, so on and so forth. On the moon, however, fossil fuels are clearly out as an energy source. We can ship fossil fuels from Earth, but it's too expensive. Wind energy is also not an option because there's no atmosphere and hence no wind on the moon. However, since the moon does not have an atmosphere, it is exposed to strong sunlight. Therefore, to get enough energy on the moon, all we need to do is to build solar panels and batteries. There are obviously complications that I've not talked about, like the moon's day and night cycle and manufacturing solar panels. But the bottom line is, solar energy would be the desired form of energy and the moon has an abundance of it. Also, if you're interested in understanding more, Dr. Chriswell from the University of Houston has plans for harnessing solar energies on the moon. We can have solar panels on Earth. Why take them to the moon? You want to take them to the moon because the sunlight on the moon is absolutely predictable. There's no air, there's no water, there's no mechanical vibration. So you don't have to build massive facilities like this. On the moon, you could replace these with solar arrays that are the thickness of tissue paper. The plan is to build thin solar panels along the rim of the moon so they get almost constant sunlight. Not only does he believe that we can harness solar power on the moon, he believes that we can send spare energy back to Earth. Therefore, in terms of energy sources, solar power is the way to go. Now let's tackle the problem of electricity. Once energy generation is figured out, electricity is at our fingertips. With the payload capability of BFR, we can send an entire power plant to the moon with one single trip. This means all the solar energy generated can be directly converted to electricity on the moon to power necessary equipment. And with electricity, we can basically run any equipment on the moon, including life-supporting shelters and electrolysis devices. Another problem we face on the moon is the lack of water. However, a recent discovery has proved it wrong. I'll let Jeff Bezos, billionaire founder of Blue Origin, takes it from here. One of the things that's very exciting about the poles of the moon as a place to go is that just in the last 10 years, we have learned that there is water ice on the moon. This was always thought to be impossible because water, whenever the, uh, the sun, when sunlight hits, if sunlight were to hit ice on the moon, it would heat up, it would turn to a vapor because of the vacuum, and then um, because the moon's gravity is so low, it would actually escape over time from the surface of the moon. It would just kind of evaporate out into space. 
And so the moon is a very dry place in general. But what we now know is that in certain craters on the poles of the moon, the North Pole and the South Pole of the moon, they are in permanent shadow. The sun never uh, reaches to the bottoms of those craters. And as a result, we now know that there is a bunch of volatiles like, like ice water um, frozen in those permanently shadowed regions. And so once you have water, you can make oxygen. So you can use electrolysis to split water up into hydrogen and oxygen. And the oxygen obviously is super useful. So you can use it and so is the hydrogen. You can use them as rocket propellants if you want. You can breathe the oxygen. Um, so uh, that, that's a very important discovery that we've learned about the moon in just the last decade. There you go. Not only is the problem with water solved, we have also found ways to generate oxygen on the moon. This effectively leaves us with a few final problems, food and radiation. Unfortunately, we need to solve these two problems on Earth. Food need to be transported from Earth along with necessary equipments I talked about such as the electrolysis devices. Radiation is another concern for astronauts living and working on the moon. Radiation-free shelters need to be built on Earth and sent to the moon in preparation launches. Perhaps in the future, we can build a self-sufficient base on the moon with the materials we can find over there, but I don't see it happening in the next decade. So in preparation of building a manned base on the moon, equipments like life supporting systems and electrolysis machines need to be sent beforehand. Therefore, it is necessary to discuss the various rockets that have the capability of sending payloads to the moon. Here we're essentially discussing super heavy lift rockets. Rockets that have the capability of sending 50 tons of payloads. Falcon Heavy is the only one that is currently operational in this category, though in the next decade, we will have a few more vehicles capable of completing tasks to the moon. EFR, the Space Launch System, and the new GLAN are among the strongest contenders. The Chinese will also reach the moon on its own with Long March 9. So with a solid foundation, the problem with internet, water, food, radiation, oxygen, energy, and electricity could all be solved in the next decade and hence pave the way for the first manned base on the moon. Lastly, I asked you guys where to go first, the moon or Mars? 5,000 people participated, and I'm surprised that most of you guys, a slight majority of you guys, actually want to go to Mars first. Uh, I just want to highlight two comments that are representative. The first one comes from TNT Sheep. Uh, the language is crude, but, but I think it does touch a core principle of space exploration. We want to explore all kinds of possibilities. That's innate to human beings, but we don't want to do it at the expense of our human astronauts. The second one is from Ali. I've chosen this comment because uh, it does have a human touch to it. He thinks that we should go to the moon first because our astronauts can come back home for dinner. Factually, it's incorrect, of course, because the trip from the moon will take around three days, but it does show us how precious our planet is and no matter where we go in the next decade, Earth will always be our home. Lastly, I wanna thank these supporters on Patreon. I have not yet figured out how my Patreon will benefit you guys, uh, but if any one of you guys who like what I do on YouTube and would like to support me on Patreon, you're welcome to do so. All right, thanks so much for watching. Thumbs if you like this video, subs if you love this channel. As always, I'm Lai, I'll catch you guys later.